Hello, everybody. Welcome to Quilt Cam. I'm Bonnie Hunter, and this is my open to studio time to uh, work on my own projects while you work on some of yours. I hope that everybody is um, getting good feed tonight, getting good volume tonight. You can tell we've got a little bit different setup. I've moved the laptop over by um, the treadle machine. I am actually working on some little crumb piecing strips. Now these strips, I started a long time ago and then they got waylaid and then I found them again and started on them again and then they got waylaid and I've got oodles of strips. These are the strips here just sewn onto the paper. There's still paper on the back and I will remove the paper before sewing them together. This is a great project to use up all those weird leftover bobbins, um, odd thread colors. I'm actually sewing with a light blue up here because I'd like to see it gone. When I am done sewing the paper to, or the fabric to the paper, it looks like this. Looks kind of hairy, I know. Um, you can join leftover triangles together. What I'm trying to do is build a section that is just a little bit more than two and a half inches across and then sew those up the strip so that I can square it down to two and a half by eight and a half. I don't know if you noticed the picture on the blog post, but can you see that little itty bitty tiny star in the center of this strip? That was the reject Papa Star uh, unit for one of my Dear Jane blocks from the first Dear Jane quilt that I did. Fabric's too busy. This is what happens when you get too small. When you go, the smaller you go, the greater your contrast needs to be so that you can tell what the design is. And this was just too busy fabrics. Um, can't see the star. I came across it just the other day, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to sew this right on in. Now it won't be lost in the bottom of the orphan um, box again. If you are new to Quilt Cam, what I do here is work on my project while you work on yours, and I just kind of um, talk while I'm working and talk about what I'm doing and how I do things. If you are watching live on the blog tonight, you can leave a comment in the comment section of the blog, which will show up in my email, which I can answer from here because I'm way too far from the keyboard to be able to answer you um, directly on the computer itself. Or you can leave a comment in the blue guest book button in the left hand sidebar of the blog. That also goes directly to my email. If you are watching later on YouTube, just leave a comment under the YouTube video and that will get to me in my email also and I can reply to you there. Or you can always uh, email me at quiltville at gmail.com. I've got buckets of scraps. Does this look like your, your savings? I know some people say all this stuff needs to be fit for the dog beds, but each and every little piece in here is a scrap from something else that I've made. And some of these pieces are kind of near and dear to my heart. I've got everything from 1930s fabrics to batiks to Civil War to old VIPs and scraps that other people have given me or that I have picked out of their trash bins. Look what I found here. Those who followed along with um, Roll Roll Cotton Bowl might recognize these. <laughs> these are the extra little uh, sashing units for our, our block. What I can do with these 
can I do this? Can I just do this? I do have a seam ripper right here. I can take them apart. I mean, seriously, where am I ever going to use these again? Do I ever want to do another identical quilt to that one? No. Okay, this is how you know when the seam ripper is dead. When the blade in the curve of the seam ripper does not cut thread anymore, it's time to pitch it. There we go. I've got one block here started already underneath the machine, but I just want to lay two units down across my paper. Now you can build little triangle units out of your leftover cut off saved triangles, but these are already sewn together. And now I'm going to take another little piece of fabric and put it right on top and just sew across. These don't have to be straight seams, or they need to be a straight seam, but it doesn't have to be directly perpendicular to the paper. They can angle and taper on the paper. And I've got my machine set down to a very small stitch length. You want it so that the paper almost wants to come off before you want it to. And that is almost, I'm going to make actually make myself a little bit bigger because it was looking a little bit too small. So here's the one that I just trimmed off. I like to work on two units at a time. One to chase the tail of the other. And that way I don't end up with a big, long, tangled chain of paper covered pieces. I'm going to trim this excess seam allowance. I have my iron set off to the side here and I'm going to press. There is no rhyme, no reason, no lines to follow when covering these papers. You can see how I started here. I had part of a nine patch. These three squares were all already sewn together. I sewed a triangle on top, added two triangles to either side, and now have added a strip and I'm going to continue to build. You can use whole pieces of fabric. You can use um, units that you are making. I've just got a lot of stuff. I think I like this one. Is this a two and a half inch square? Nope, it's too narrow, so it needs something sewn to the side of it. What can I do? I will take this square and cut it in half. So we can just build units. I'm just thinking about width. These papers already have their seam allowance added, so they will finish at 2 by 8. So we'll grab the next one. So here I have my two triangles with a turquoise piece on top. And now I've got this lime green guy I can add underneath. You can get as crazy as you want or not. And it is just fun to sit at the treadle machine and do this. Okay, so I've made my unit a little bit wider by adding one rectangle on the side. And now I'm going to add this on top of the blue piece up here, or the brown piece. It's great mindless sewing. Press this one up. Okay, so there's our two triangles covered on either side by those two scraps. And I like to press as I go because I want to be sure that things are um, getting nice and flat so we don't have puckers. It's another piece I need to make a little bit longer. If I pick out a piece that's just too small, I just add it to the chain and make it a little bit wider. So here's some, some of the blocks that I finished so far. This was the one that was in the photograph on the blog for um, with this newsfeed. Fun fabrics in there. But look at this one. Can you see the spotted cow fabric? Isn't that great? So you sew four of those two and a half by eight and a half inch strips together and you get a block that's going to finish at eight inches in the quilt. You can do whatever you want to with these. I really haven't decided yet what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to sash them or just join them side by side. But I just can't let these little scraps go. They're precious and so colorful and so fun. This is definitely not 
your one fabric line jelly roll charm pack quilt. Each fabric in here tells a story of a quilt that it came from or an article of clothing it came from or somebody else's scrap that it came from. Aren't those fun? So that's where my mind is today and hopefully my stack will continue to grow and I'll have enough for a quilt from my leftovers. Let's check into the email inbox and see who's following along with us tonight. Tell me what you're working on. All the way to the top, PT in South Carolina says, hope you have a great time in Ireland and thanks for the chance to win your magazine. You are so welcome. So there is a drawing going on the blog right now. It was this morning's post and this is um, for Quiltmaker Magazine's July, August, I, have, I wrote it first, August, September, we're not that far ahead yet. July, August issue, it has part three of my lazy, myst lazy Sunday mystery and a really fun block in my Addicted to Scraps column. And we've got a lot of fighting going on in the inbox because I have all of these people registering for the, book, for the magazine giveaway and people who are here tonight on... Uh, Quill cam. Here, this um, is a message from Barbara who says, "Thank you for the wonderful lecture on all of your scrap quilts recently presented at the Wings Falls Quilt Guild. I did so enjoy it, and your quilts are so beautiful. It did encourage me to start cutting up my scraps for a future quilt, or should I say, quilts, as I do have a stash of 35 years or more. Thank you for the inspiration, and we love our deep stash. That deep stash tells the story of our life, and it's precious." Here's from Janet who says, hi from not so sunny Queensland. Great to see you live for the first time in ages. I'm currently working on a quick baby quilt for a baby boy that arrived last week. Hurry up Janet before he turns one. <laughs> Sounds fun. So um, hello to Queensland. And this one says, Kathleen says it's still blurry and there's not a dang thing I can do about it. So sorry Kathleen. And uh, Kathy says, Quilt Cam, I love Quilt Cam. We're dodging thunderstorms tonight, and I'm working on a quilt for my son's former roommate who's being deployed next month. And she's doing uh, one of the patterns from my website right there. You can find all the free patterns under the free patterns tab at the top of the blog at quiltville.blogspot.com. Lots of stuff there for you. And Teresa Roy says, Teresa from Maine here. I thought I would share my lazy Sunday progress so far. Almost done on part two. On the lower right hand corner are my leader and enders. You might recognize them as half square triangles from your Jamestown landing. I started it at your workshop here in Maine at the beginning of the month and see if you can spy one of Mary's stilettos on there. Oh, I'm looking, I see. That looks so awesome. There's her lazy Sunday progress. Let's see if I can biggie size this a little bit. So she's got, if I go much bigger, you can't see. She's got her um, lazy Sunday progress going right there. Yep, love it, just love it. And then there's her, st her stiletto is farther down on the page. Okay, let's sew some more. You know, there will always be somebody who will say, it's blurry for me, or it's not working for me, or this, that, or the other thing. And I really don't have control over that. I live in a very remote area. I have upped my service as much as I am going to up my service to be able to get a better reception down here in my basement and if we don't then you know if it doesn't come in for you I, I apologize but I can't fix it it is what it is now, a couple weeks ago we had a problem where I actually lost power here and had to reboot if the reboot happens it will not happen on the same screen as this one I have to start a whole second news feed so what you have to then do is go back to the blog and look for the second screen below the first screen because it, you cannot add a feed to a closed feed. Okay. And this one here. Add this one on. This is the first time I am treadling in sandals. Treadling is a shoe wearing experience because you will end up with waffles on the bottom of your feet if you don't. So I need something with really good soles so that my feet stay comfortable and don't start hurting from the pedal. 
we do trim excess seam allowance. See how this one's coming? Got a little bit of a slant there. This adds a little bit of character. You don't have to have everything march in straight little soldiers up the strip. You can slant and lean things to your own liking. And I like to stir this up and get as many colors going in here as I can. Oh, this will be a good one down here. If I end up with a really short strip like this, I'm just going to add it to another short one and then I can use them together. These are just fun. And here's another. I've got pink and blue and green and brown. What have I not put in here yet? That's usually what I'm asking myself. What did I not? Oh, what did I find here? Look at this. Half square triangles. Let's cut them apart. And we can stitch them together and use those. Maybe we'll take this red one and add this little rectangle to it. The problem is when you give yourself too much, oh here's another triangle, we'll do that. When you give yourself too much to dig through, it's too hard to make a quick decision because you start second guessing yourself on whether this piece is good enough or that piece is good enough. So I really like to just work from one handful of stuff. And then when I can't work that handful anymore, grab some more stuff. Okay. How about some, how about we stir it again because I'm not liking anything I see. See what I mean about being picky? Yellow. We do like yellow. And maybe a little bit of yellow on a slant. this piece will come off and now it's big enough to go across the other one at the top here. It's true, you just really can't ever get rid of anything because it'll always go somewhere. I like to trim right over my trash can. Okay. These do look kind of funny until you get them trimmed up, but once they're trimmed up, they're pretty fun. Okay. Here is, let's do this. I'm going to put this blue triangle across this way. Kind of like doing flying geese without doing flying geese, without lines to follow. Get my trash can closer. See how fun those triangles are looking? It, it, they add such a punch to what could normally be just a regular string block. Okay, so now you'll see I have two white triangles of paper showing here. So now what I want to do is find smaller pieces to cover these corners. But remember, I've got a quarter inch seam allowance here. So this one, whatever I sew here, could very well get lost in the corner. I'm not going to sew anything here because look how much is hanging off the bottom of my paper. Remember, the paper is just a size guideline. And uh, 
once I've covered the paper and if I have enough hanging down over here to make up for how short this triangle is, I can adjust how I trim this. Let's sew a little bit of orange here for that bigger corner. Nice recycled orange shirt. I think orange shirts are my favorite. Okay. And let's. I've also got a, just for some variety in here. I like that. I keep a string bucket underneath my cutting table, especially where I run the AccuQuilt. And then anything that is a string just goes into the basket for doing stuff like this. This would make a really, really cool border for a quilt. Or you could use it as scrappy sashings in between pieced blocks. Okay, so we're going to consider that one done because I've got enough hanging off the bottom end to make up for where I am short on top. And the pile grows. So let's see who's tuning in with us tonight. It's starting to get hot and humid here in North Carolina. So when that happens, I've got ponytail weather because it's just too hot to have hair down the neck. Okay. Downloading 16. Holy cow. Here is Dottie, who says, sat this weekend and sewed the binding on a baby quilt that is almost a year overdue while watching you on YouTube. Good! Tonight I am sewing up the binding for another quilt that I am hand quilting, taking a break on the hand quilting as my finger is hurting from pushing the needle. Keep sewing, and that's Dottie. So Dottie, are you a thimble user or no? I wear a thimble on my middle right finger, but where I get sore is the side of my thumb right here because I'm one of those who when I rock the needle I need to feel the prick of that needle coming through to make sure that I am biting all three layers of the fabric so I've got a good callus on the side of my thumb and then on my under fingers really get callus we all we all work differently but just keep doing what works best for you and here is Shelly who says, I was reading your page on binding and I have a couple of questions. Uh-oh, let's hope I have the right answers. She says, when I've entered quilts to be judged, the judges always tell me to be careful on binding corners. I always seem to get them bunchy. Do you trim your batting even with the quilt top or leave a bit to stuff the binding? I trim to the quilt top and I actually snip the corners of my, after, after applying my binding all the way around, I will snip just the corner, just barely, barely of the quilt top batting and backing so that the binding folds have somewhere to go without it making a lump and I can get a really good square corner that way. But the one thing I'm really bad about is I don't like to sew the folds closed on my binding. I think that's a made up rule. I think 150 years ago women didn't do that to their quilts. They did not sew their miters shut and so somebody came along and said this is the new rule, you must do it. And so that's one of my, uh, I guess, passive aggressive tendencies is to just leave those little folds in the corners of my binding. Uh, let's see what other your question was. She says, after attaching the binding to the front, do you clip the corners? Yes, I do. Um, she says, if you have time next time you're binding with your feet up, maybe you can take new pictures of your corner work. I just discovered, I just covered this whole thing and showed um, on video on the last quilt cam that we did because I was binding three quilts in a row one right after another and I showed how I clipped the corners so um, you may it, it may be a while before I bind again and I'll, I'll try to remember that the next time I bind but you might find that on the last quilt cam previous to this one she says I just can't seem to get them right and that's from Shelly and farm quilter says Lovely quilts and blocks in the issue, and thanks for the opportunity to win a copy. You're so welcome. That drawing will be on Sunday. Quilty Val says, I'm curious as to how small a piece has to be before you get rid of it. One inch square. If it's smaller than one inch square, I don't bother. Most of my pieces that I save, if I'm going to trim them down, the smallest trimmed piece I save is a one and a half inch square. But if it's a crumb, like a piece like this, 
it's perfect. It just needs to be sewn to something else so that it can go across. And I think I can sew these side by side this way, the long way, and get a piece that'll cover the paper. It just depends on how many seams and stuff you don't mind dealing with because, of course, the more pieces something has, the harder it may be to hand quilt it. But, you know, I've hand quilted string quilts before, and you just kind of got to work your way through any bulky areas by stab stitching through the seam allowance a few times, and then you can take off running again. There we go. We can spread a little bit of Joe Morton love. In fact, this is one of the pieces that she sent me a couple weeks ago. I had cut out all the hexagons that I could from the small pieces she sent, and then everything else came to join the crumb parade over here. So we're going to start another one. I want to continue to use these up. Maybe I know what I want to do. I want to sew a piece the long way and put these three triangles going down. So maybe I'll sew this blue to here. You can be as inventive as you want. Remember, there really are no rules. Did you guys see the, the pictures of the rainbow quilt that I posted the other day? I would have loved the quilt police to take a look at that one up close and personal. We are talking major chopped off points. And those rainbows that went around, it's like she just took a flat strip of diamonds and, and pleated it to go around the corners and stitched it on there. Some things do not quilt out, but what a fabulous quilt. So I just really, you know, if somebody somebody had to make the rule somewhere. And before they made the rule, it wasn't a rule. So I just don't buy into that. Okay, so that's still not wide enough. So I need to add another strip to that. I usually put all my short ends on one side so that I can just kind of shove those in between other things. And yes, you can get a workout on a treadle machine. Okay, so I've got this little strip set. Added a strip to make it wide enough. And it is. And now I can add on either side of that. No rules. Just fun. That's all. Just fun. What can we sew onto this? Maybe? Nope, not wide enough. Wrong color. We need something really colorful here. Oh, these are good. These look like they've even been through the wash. Little little sample stuff. All right. It's just a fun way to work when there are no real rhymes or reasons. A lot of these crumbs um, have been sitting here too for working on the wild and goosey blocks that I did in last month's Quilt Maker magazine. It's amazing how far you can go with just a back basket of stuff, and the best part is the variety you've got in that basket. Choose quickly. How about some cheddar? This was from a shirt yoke. Couldn't get any more strips out of it, but I sure love this orange color. And don't forget to throw in some solids, because the solids really give your eye a place to focus. It's like the light shines brighter on a solid. Give it a little triangle. All kind of little stuff. And some skinny ones. Sewing some skinny ones in, that's about three-fourths of an inch right there. So that'll give me about a quarter inch showing. But that really makes stuff interesting. You will never guess what my husband did today. 
and I can say this because he's not home. He's driving to Wilmington tonight to work for a couple of days. But uh, he invited his boss over after golf without giving me a heads up. And the house was a wreck, and he wanted to show him my studio. And the studio is just a disaster because when I when I am busy creating, I am busy creating. I am digging for just the right fabric and casting this one that way and that other one the other way. And he said, "Oh, I'm bringing him over to meet you to see the house." <sighs> Shouldn't there be a rule against that? That the husband must give you at least two hours advance warning before inviting his boss to the house. So I was flustered. He couldn't understand why I was flustered. He said, he's a guy. He doesn't care about the house. If there's guys out there listening, don't do it. Don't invite people over without giving your wife advance notice. Okay, so we've got three strips across, two strips on top, working on it, can sew in a couple of more um, triangles here. Maybe I just want to sew this one to the side of a square. There were some plain squares. Here we go. How about... Eh. No, we'll do it on the side of this one. But I like that I'm just working on two pieces at once. The chain is very short, easy to trim off and grab the next piece. And then we ask ourselves, what shall we sew on here now? And shall we put it at a little bit of an angle just to make it a little bit more fun? Okay. That way, I think. That's probably my husband saying, I'm listening to you all the way to Win w Wilmington. Nope, it's not. This is from, from Nell. She says she needs 24 hours advance notice. I so agree. <laughs> but two hours, I could hide a lot in laundry baskets. Always keep empty laundry baskets around because you can put stuff in them and haul them off to a closet really quickly. Yeah. Okay. It worked out okay. You just have to get over it, I guess. So here we are. This one is building along. I've added two pieces down here. This is that piece from the shirt. Looks like I can find something that's just going to cover that corner, and this one will be done. So what do I got that'll work? How about... I need a color I haven't used yet. Do I have any wide pieces? No, now I have to sew them together. There's Wait, there's a big purple. That may work. And this one, just has one triangle with a little piece added to the side. We'll just keep it going. Dig in the bucket. Here's this uh, blue piece. That may just do what I need it to do. This would be a great project to teach little kids to sew. The strips don't have to be long, they're just covering. 
This one's now done. Looking better. It'll look even better once we trim it up. All right, let's check who's with us tonight. Looks like the inbox is filling up. Here's from Bev Gunn who says, Your crumbs are so neat. I'm trimming the blue million dog ears from Lazy Sunday. There was not a million in there, not even close. Those half square triangle squares sure do need a haircut. Then we'll press half square triangle squares I made 15 years ago for a quilt by Carol Liebzite, and I thought I was going wild back then, but finished 129 nine patches that have been my leaders and enders for the last year, so progress is being made. Thanks so much for Quilt Cam. I have been waiting all day for it. I've been waiting all day too, mostly trying to figure out, okay, now that those bindings are on, what the heck do I do for Quilt Cam? This fits the bill. Here is Kay Fry who says, desperate to watch you tonight. Massive dental work done yesterday and need your company. Oh, I'm so sorry, girl. Working on row quilt and Dallas Cowboy raffle quilt. Love your new not a log cabin. It is wood outside. It's not log cabin, but it's wood cabin. We're really happy about it. And she says it's not blurry on her iPad. So remember that the reception might have everything to do with your own reception at home and what's going on between me to the, through the cable to wherever this is being hosted on YouTube, to back to you at your computer, and everywhere in between, okay? This is Messy. Messy says, oh, I am so glad to see your basket of mess from Peggy, who says, not all neat and neater. Oh, I make a mess. You guys just be glad you're not looking at my floor right now. And Suzanne. Suzanne in Massachusetts says, you're fine and clear for me, Bonnie. My sewing machine isn't behaving tonight, so I'm doing some hand sewing along with you. Never hand pieced anything before, and I'm skeptical that I can do a good job, but fingers crossed. You know, I had two hand piecers while I was in Ottawa, Illinois last week. Um, was that only just a little over a week ago? Crazy. Um, two different days, two different ladies, hand piecing up a storm, both of them work a little bit differently, but I picked up some really, really good tips. And um, it was amazing how much that you can carry pre-cut in a little basket and only need to have your, your thread and your scissors and your needles and a couple of pins, and you are ready to go. In the meantime, everybody else is hauling in machines and tables and plexiglass surrounds and cutting mats and ev everything. So I think that there's going to be a lot more hand piecing in my future especially for some of those patterns that are just really, really easier to hand piece than it would be to machine piece. So like, I'll probably not hand piece things like four patches and nine patches, but if it got to some blazing star thing with all these gazillion points, that would be the thing to hand piece. She says, love the little women quilt that you posted on your blog the other day. That looks like a good project for some handwork. My twin sister lives in Ireland, and hopefully we'll get the chance to see you somewhere along your trip. Oh, that would be so neat. I um, hope you have a lovely time. I love that Little Women quilt. I posted that just yesterday. So if you missed that one, go to the blog and type in Little Women in the search bar, and it should come up for you. Um, that was made in the 1950s. The blocks were applicated in the 50s. I did not find a source for the pattern. Um, I did find the author of the pattern, and it's written in that blog post. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Pat says, I'm sure this is a dumb question, but why are you using paper on the crumbs? Is this easier? Have a great time in Ireland. Pat, it just helps me keep things um, nice and flat. It gives me a size to shoot for, and it adds some stability to these really, really odd scraps. So I can look at the size of the paper and say, okay, I need to piece a section about this long. And then when my section's that long, I can sew it on. And the paper helps hold things stable because a lot of my pieces have bias or are off grain. These are the true end of the scrap user system stuff here. I mean, this is just the tail, tail end. So I like the paper for the stability and for helping me know which way I need to go with the next piece that I'm putting on. When I'm doing regular square crumb blocks, not so much, because I just piece a, a, a piece randomly, just flip and sew, until I know I have a piece bigger than the square I'm going to cut. But, but this really helps me keep these nice and flat in the way that I want to do them. And I don't want those. I'm going to be a little pickier here. I want some fun stuff. What is this? 
Ooh, I have two squares sewn together. Will they equal my two and a half? I'm going to press that seam open. I find if I have pieces that are pieced, like, like squares or things that are going down, if I press that center seam open, it lays flatter for me. Added a blue on the bottom. So sometimes I'll work side by side. I, this one I worked all the way to that end. But sometimes I will jump back and forth just depending on what the, the piece that I picked up wants to do. Here's a nice pink. We'll just sew that one right across there. Pieced pieces are just much more interesting than plain pieces. I have this little square. Can I add it to anything? I found plenty of pieces in here. Here's a half square triangle already sewn together. Some of these scraps I know were not mine because I know I never bought these fabrics. It came from a gift bag somewhere and that lays right down the center so I can do that. I think I want this yellow piece. So right on there. The pieces that are made with more than one piece, oh, how did I get two going? Oh, well, are just more interesting and more fun to look at. All kinds of nice stuff here. Throw in that lovely little skinny just because they add such a little kick. This one I added at an angle, so I'm going to fold the paper back and trim the excess about a quarter inch from the seam. And I just do that with scissors right over the trash can. With these, the quarter inch seam is not all that important because the seam is already in place. It's the seam itself that matters and you just trim the seam allowance away from it. It's, it does not have to be an exact quarter inch seam. Let's throw in some more of this lovely cheddar. It's going to be really nice and small. It is brainless. Looking pretty good so far. I just love how they look when you sew all the strips together. It's just, there are no two alike. It's just so much fun.
excess here. Trim that off and I can use that again. Because I have paper, I can tell just how much farther I need to go. And it just makes it lay so nice and flat. You know what I'm really missing is some more red or something. Oh, there's some little brown. Tell myself, don't just dig, just pick something and sew it. But I keep, I've got a lot of green and I've got a lot of purple, but not a whole lot of, ooh. Here's some turquoise. Turquoise is always good. We're going to sew this brown piece to the side of the turquoise and then add it in one section. It's a little too narrow. So I've been thinking about this Ireland trip. I've been watching the weather. Looks like the temperatures are going to be in the high 50s to low 60s. That's Fahrenheit for here. Give me an idea of what that feels like. That's about like March weather here in North Carolina. Um, so I've got to pack some warmer things. And my girlfriend said, pack lots of socks and carry an extra pair of socks with you in case you need to change because puddles and rain happen a lot. I've got a little umbrella. A little umbrella can go with me. And of course my hexes and stuff are ready for that flight. If you are on the Ireland trip with me and you're watching tonight, I want to encourage you to please bring some handwork because we will be spending a lot of time on the bus and uh, you may want to be stitching on something while you enjoy the view out the window while you uh, go from place to place to place okay so here's a problem that I made for myself right here can you see how I fell short of the paper here that's because I placed this at an angle and didn't give myself enough flipping room. So what I'm going to do is add a triangle across there that will cover that corner. Remember, no rules. We just got to pick a color is all. Looks like I can go across both of those pieces because they're both short. So let's just take this rectangle and we're just going to sew it on there. I'll move this one a little bit out of the way. You don't have to work straight across, you can work up and down. <laughs> this side I was a little bit short of the paper right here, but I've added extra margin on this side so I can still get my two and a half inches out of this. That's all that matters. Okay, so we're going to peel that back and snip that extra seam allowance. And it's either extremely warm in here, or I've got the onset of a major hot flash. Whew! It's a little balmy in the basement. As a general rule, trying to be a little bit bigger than your paper is your best idea. Leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Looks like two more pieces and I'll be able to have this one finished. 
Uh -huh. We've got a lot of green in that one already. What do I not have? I can do some more pink. I'll do some pink up here. My crumbs are just kind of collected at the cleanup part of every project. And so often I'll have, if a project has a color theme, there'll be those a pile of just those colors of crumbs at the top of the crumb box. So it's like, why do I have all this green? Oh yeah, because I was doing a green scrappy quilt and these are the crumbs. There, so this looks kind of interesting now. First off, I had these two pieces and then I added this blue one and remember I was short on that corner so I added this polka dot right here and then I just added the black and it looks like I'm building kind of a log cabin right in the center of that strip. And we just keep it going. That's a good piece. So for the gal who was asking, you know, why do I have paper? It does add stability because look at the shape of this piece here. I'll be able to add this. I'm going to sew this on this, the straight of grain part. But let's see. If you, en if you end up, I think you can see from this. This black piece wasn't really straight either. Can you tell that it's got a, kind of a slight curve to it? because it's pressed up against the paper, I can take this next piece and lay it straight across, not paying any attention to the curved edge of that black one, and still get a nice flat piece. It helps you keep your work flat so that you don't get ripples in your piecings. I can trim that one about there and sew that to another thing. Just a stabilizer. These were actually the back page to several patterns, and I can see, I can see I cut the there was half of a sheet of eight and a half by eleven, and uh, so these were eight and a half by five, and I can see on here copyright 1992, <laughs> and I saved these papers because they're they're so good to work with still. This is when I lived in. Burley, Idaho, and I had a P.O. box at that time, so it's all on there. So it's fun to live that little blast from the past, too. Yes, we even hang on to scrap paper because you never know when you'll need it. That's too small. My big fear is that I will run out of bobbin because I didn't wind any extras. And this one does not have a bobbin winder, in which case we just do a timeout and Bonnie goes and grabs some more bobbins off the other thing. There. Pretty fun. Dare you to try this. It's really addictive, especially if you get some Netflix movies playing while you sew. Here's Sherry who says, thanks for having quilt cam, so enjoy sewing with you. I've attached a picture of a smaller bricks and stepping stones quilt. One of the ladies in my American Sewing Guild group started a project to make lap quilts for the veterans who go on the honor flights in our area. When I told her I would find use for some of her scraps, she brought me a large bag of patriotic fabrics. I'm working on my second bricks and stepping stones. Next, I'll work on one using the strip twist pattern. Oh, that's really pretty. Can you see all the red, white, and blue colors in there? She's doing a great job. She really is. And you know, that's my, that's my goal someday is to retire and be able to make quilts for those who need them. That, that would be my dream come true. Tonight, Carol says, I'm having my niece from Texas make a half square triangle quilt with her college fabric. Not that she came here to make one, but the top is almost halfway done. It's called Hook 'em Young, Hook 'em Young. That's wonderful. Thanks, Carol, for tuning in tonight, and good luck to your niece and her new, new college. That's wonderful. And uh, let's see. Barbara says, thanks again for the wonderful lecture at Wings Falls Quilt Guild in upstate New York. 
I love upstate New York. We had a lot of fun. I would come back anytime. This one is quilt from Quilty Val says, just checking in and saying, hi, love watching Quilt Cam, but not quilting tonight because I'm in the mood for crochet. We don't care what you do, just as long as you can squeeze an extra hour out of your day doing something for yourself and making progress on something. Even a little bit of progress on something makes me feel like um, the next day I can handle it so much better. This is from Tartan. How are you, Tartan? She says, I'm machine quilting a little wall hanging tonight. Decided the background needed to be chicken wire. I'm sure glad it's only 15 by 15 because it isn't easy to keep the wire pattern straight. What was I thinking? That's why you purposely do it crooked. If you just do it crooked, then, then it was supposed to be that way, and it's your choice. And this one is <laughs> from Peggy, who says her subject line says, Perfect. So you hear this is perfect, everybody. She says, my stash is suffocating me. How many of you feel that way? I'm so in the mood to get control of it, and tonight's webcam is perfect. Perfect. I got the IKEA light just like yours. Yes, this is my IKEA light over here. Can you see that? Ooh, yeah, bright light. It shines a really good light here on the treadle when the treadles don't come with a, a built-in light on them. At least this one was 1911, so it didn't have any electric anything attached to it. Um, she says, thank you for all you do to inspire us, and congrats on the cabin. So the cabin is really, it's going to be amazing. It's just going to be amazing. Um, it does feel very much like a, a wonderful dream come true. Like it should not even be happening, you know. Um, we started looking last summer, and everything that we looked at was either in the wrong area, too far away from home, or it had issues, either with the price or the condition of the cabin and how much work it would take to bring it up to snuff. And um, so we put it on the back burner. And then this, this spring, or I guess it was this winter, it was still winter, because it was snowing up there when we went one day, we said, well, let's start looking again. And we looked and we looked and we looked and we found some things we liked. And we even had one that we thought would just be perfect. But the location was just terrible. If you could have picked that cabin up and moved it, it was, it was like seven miles down a dirt road um, in the middle of nowhere, about 45 minutes from the nearest store or any kind of civilization. I, I want remote. I don't want that remote. Um, so we gave up for a while, and then I got busy traveling and didn't have any Saturdays off when we could go, lo go um, looking. And so the one that we liked and had put on a back burner, the other one, there was one we really liked, um, they dropped the price because the sellers were really motivated to sell. And uh, at that point we thought, well, you know what, let's, let's go take another look at that one because before it was out of our price range. And now it's in our price range, and we just feel like it was meant to be. The sellers are so motivated that um, they want to close. They wanted to close by the end of June. The soonest we can is July 3rd. But if we close July 3rd, we will be in our new cabin July 4th. They are leaving most of the furnishings behind. Um, it's just, it's just a, a wonderful situation for us to have found that. So... I'm looking forward to spending time there and making it my own. And yes, I've had lots of people eager to come sew already. I may be selfish and keep it to myself for just a little while before we let the hordes in. Um, we are hoping at some point that uh, when, when I'm not able to be home and to use it, that if there are s small quilt groups in the area, say six to eight people, but we may do a vacation rental by owner just to quilters only. We don't want it to the, the main public or anything, but just to quilters only for your retreats. It's got uh, everything that, that anybody would need and then some. So stay tuned for that. And there will be more pictures posted um, in, the, in the next several days. I wanted to be sure that, that everything was going to go through first before I posted all the pictures because if something happened and it didn't go through it would break my heart. So you see this treadle machine right here? This one this is the this is the hand wheel to my Singer 127. I think that's the machine that's going to go to the cabin and live there. 
it's a great machine. It has a vibrating shuttle, and so it's got the long shuttle and the, the long bobbins. And it has a beautiful stitch. And I just don't sew on it as much because it faces the back wall, and the TV screen is that direction. Oh, ho! Anybody doing Lazy Sunday? Guess what this is? Guess what this is? I just may have to sew it in right here. I think I will. Just pick something up and sew it on. If it's big enough, it goes. If it's too short, it gets something added to it, and then that gets sewn on. So these two short pieces, I'm just going to sew them right to each other so that I can use those as one section. Okay, this one's done. I still have a little bit of paper showing here. Can you see that? But look how much excess is on this end. So I can I can stop here, and this one's done. And I'm getting quite a stack. This is fun. Top of the inbox. If I missed your comments, I'll go back to them um, later and answer you by email. Kim Andrews from Minnesota says, driving home from a soccer game and listening to you on my iPhone. Wonderful. Who won, Kim? She says, got a flat tire on our way home. Difficult to listen to you and help change a tire. <laughs> you got your priorities right, girl. Uh, waiting to hear about your cabin. We'll listen to Quilt Cam ASAP. Headed to Chicago on Friday for a long weekend. We'll see Caroline from Belgium and Val's Quilt Shop. That's the quilt merchant um, in Winfield. She says, plan to bring hand stitching for the car. Have fun in Ireland. Someday I hope to go on a trip with you. And that would be such a blast to go with somebody who's taller than me. Um, Laura says, finished crumb quilt for great nephew. Oh, this is really great. She says, all it needs is a label. This was so much fun. Everyone keeps commenting on the amount of work, but it was really easy and fast. And I'm going to see if I can biggie size this just a little bit. It's got all the alphabet letters all the way around. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save your uh, photo and post it to the blog in the next couple of days or something. What I've got to do is get. I've got to get posts ready and set ahead for when I'm in Ireland. And this is what I did when I went to Bali last year. Is I I did. Uh, I think it was 12 days of show and share. So every morning on the blog, I would show um, three or four people's quilts that they'd sent me the pictures of. And so I really need to get going on that because I'm going to have another 12 days where I'm out of the country. And I have no idea what my connectivity will be when I'm in Ireland. So we'll do that. But yeah, crumb quilts are just fun. If you have not done them before, you just need to play. Allow yourself the time to play. And you may make some blocks that you really don't like. And that's okay because you won't learn how to do what you do like unless you make some that you don't. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I've got... Blue, black, gold, and gray. It's all kind of mushy. And maybe I need some brighter colors. So these are all kind of cool, murky colors. So I want to pull in some brighter things like some oranges. And I've got some right here. And maybe some purple. Purple would be good. There we go. Hey, this is a double duty one. It's got two pieces sewn together already. We're just going to slap that sucker right on there. And that should take care of that end. So all of those little leftover ends from doing nine patches and things, you know, you get down to the end of the strip and you can't get another two and a half inch cut out of it. Save those. I've joined a couple of small sections to each other. So now I have two pieced sections that I can add to the next thing. 
and looks like I need to start a new paper. That works excellent. Maybe not. <laughs> Gotta find a color that I like. And these pieces are kind of big, so what I will do is just cut a piece. Make sure you only have one piece of paper. Another thing that works great here is all of those corners that you cut off of things like um, joining your borders and bindings on the diagonal. Those corners can sew up into a whole bunch of fun little triangles that will just uh, dance their way across these. That needs something like a red or a something. And are you big enough? Oh, yes, you are big enough. This would be a really great retreat project. You could sew all weekend just out of one tub of junk. And then your people at retreat will start throwing things your way. This could be fortuitous. These were all pieces that were cut off of a, of a charm square to do something and somebody didn't want these little pieces and I scrounged them from them. This little section, cuteness. No rhyme, no reason, just adding pieces. You're looking for variety and contrast. I like each strip to show up next to whatever it's sewn to, so I wouldn't put two blue strips right next to each other. So you want to put some busy things next to some things that are not so busy. Change your textures. I just added a plaid on top of kind of a floral and a little linear thing, and then there's a batik down here. So yes, you can put a country plaid in the same strip as a purple batik. It's just fabric. It's just color. And then change your angles up so that things lean from side to side. It's coming along. I'm going to stick a couple more of these triangles on here, I think. Let's cut those apart. And trim excess seam allowance always. Number one, you don't want it to shadow through a light area if you happen to have a light area. But these pieces are really small and you want to eliminate as much bulk as possible. So remember to go back and trim. And throw in as many different colors as you can. Novelty fabrics are great. Here's that Quilt Diva fabric. This would be just awesome fun on here. So I think I'm going to try to cut her. Can I fussy cut her in a way to make her still show up? Maybe. If I cut her here, save her feet for something else. I need to add a strip onto this side. So maybe a strip of this gold. I 
I love novelty fabrics. The bigger prints are harder for me to use because I do a lot of small piecing, but little things like little butterflies or little sewing machines or little music notes, stuff like that. Oh, and things with words. Love stuff with words. So I'm going to sew a little quilt diva girl onto here. I'm going to need to have this go straight across. And I want her kind of centered on there. So we're going to It's always a crapshoot because <laughs> sometimes angles are funny. And you have to learn to be patient when you sew with two pieces because I can't just rip her right out of the machine. She has to come out after I sew again on this one. But what I like about two timing now this one's done. Let's start the second one. Is that stuff gets done, and and bobbins last twice as long. I only have to think about just the two that I'm sewing on. So I don't like to think about a whole chain down the road because maybe I had a plan for that one, but by the time I get back around to it, I've forgotten what that is. How about purple? How many of you have this? in your stash. Do you recognize that? I think we call this the eternal swirl. We have it in every color that it ever came out in. At least I do. Love it. I'm going to cut this into two triangles and sew myself a big honkin' flying geese on here. Maybe at an angle. And now we can check how Quilt Diva did. Oh, that's cute. See how we got her in there? And now I'm going to do a big triangle that will cover this top corner. How about this, this brown and pink batik? I think I like that. Just going to put that across there. Make sure that it will cover when you fold. There we go. This one has a very lopsided flying goose, so I will add a triangle to this side and a triangle to this side, and then I can start stacking up the top again. Oh, so busy piecing, I forget to check for messages. We're going to go right to the top of the news feed. Simone says, thanks for the quilt cam, Bonnie. Love to watch this while I am sewing. Appliqueing leaves on a heliconia block. Have gotten some shirts to deconstruct and a dark pair of jeans for the jeans quilt I will be constructing soon. And that's from Simone in Australia, sitting in long sleeves and woolens, wet, rainy, and cold, cold winter. Isn't it just amazing how the world flip-flops? Because I remember being envious of you in your just past summer when we were freezing here. So uh, stay warm, stay in and sew. It's the best place to be. This one is from Melody who says, I like sewing with crumbs too, but they do seem to multiply. I'm putting sleeves on quilts for our Northeast Quilt Guild show, which is next weekend. I entered six quilts, five are your patterns. Wow, thanks Melody. She says, do you see a trend here? <laughs> thanks for Quilt Cam and have a fun time in Ireland. And that's Melody from Erie. If you were on my Facebook friends page, which I hope all of you are, um, I did post about the... Northeast Quilters Guild Show today. So check your news feed. Check the 
Quiltville Friends Wall for the time and the place. It sounds like it's going to be a really neat one, and their theme is, I think it's Vacation Destination, something like that. Should be a great show. I wish I could be there. This one is from Patricia, who says, When do you pull the paper off the crumbs? When you sew the blocks together? After trimming. I like to trim mine up first. In fact, that's a good question because I can pull this right up here. So here's one that is trimmed, and here's the paper. If I sew these together with the paper on, that means seams are going to cross seams. And now I will be painstakingly picking paper out of my seam allowance. Remember, the paper's there only to give us a size and some stability. So what I like to do now is just remove the paper, and it comes off super easy. So I like to loosen this top edge by running my finger across it. And then you just rip side to side, just like you're taking paper out of a notebook. Some people like to remove the paper. i got to do it this way where I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Some people like to remove the paper um, before squaring down. But it doesn't bother me this way. I'm just careful not to stretch the block as I, as, or the strip as I work on it. But the paper just comes off. Once it's trimmed, there is no reason to keep the paper in here anymore. So I just I trim them up and then remove the paper, and then the papers just go in the trash. So I will use reject printer paper or whatever paper that I can get my hands on as long as ink doesn't come off on the iron. And I never use water or steam in my iron when working with paper of any kind. That's whether I'm doing regular paper piecing or paper just piecing to cover. This is foundation piecing because we're just piecing to cover the foundation. Paper piecing is where you're sewing on a distinct line to create a specific pattern. Um, no steam, no water, no mush, no running ink. I hope that an answers your question. Karen says, I would love to win a copy of your magazine. Well, Karen, you left your, left your name there on the blog or in the guest book, and we will be sure to enter you into that drawing. And Car Kathleen says, oh, how cute. Here's the finished label for a row along quilt. It's 16 by 16, and it's a bumblebee. How cute is that? That's a 16-inch bumblebee block. Adorable. Love it. Thank you for sharing that. And one more from Jessica, who says, Hope this works. I love the treadle. I have a sewing room envy. Do you have a finished quilt design with these blocks? Nope. Um, the things that I work with on um, Quilt Cam are, this is just my own private personal studio time where I am working on projects that do not have a pattern. Um, it may be something that I may be patterning in the future, but those quilts have to be made and completed before I can write a pattern for them. That's just the way that I work. So in the future, when I decide how I'm going to set them, then that will likely be a pattern. She says, I will have done this method on a mini or a border. It worked great. Thanks for Quilt Cam. It's much more enjoyable to watch. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Marge says, I'm taking a break from assembling my easy street blocks. I have all the parts done, the setting triangles done, plus the block B's assembled, and two block A's assembled. Girl, you are on a roll. She says, trying to get the top together before some thread arrives, and I have to quilt for some customers. Love the idea of renting the cabin to do a quilt retreat. Sounds like fun. It is going to be a lot of fun. And I think you can understand why I'm wanting to keep it to myself for just a little bit. I will be um, traveling heavy here again. Once once I leave for Ireland, it's going to be this way for for the end of till the end of the year. Um, I've got two Alaska things going on, both in August, two separate trips back and forth, and uh, we've got the collaboration celebration. Happening here, happening here in Winston-Salem in between those two Alaska trips. When I get back from Ireland, I've got just a few days home, and then um, I have a trip to uh, Monroe, Louisiana. So if you're listening from the Monroe area, I will be in your neck of the woods, and this is where Hubby says, Yay, Duck Dynasty! And uh, I doubt I'll be seeing any Duck Dynasty folks, but... You know, that, that's what he would wish for. I need some red. I need something peppy in here. Maybe, maybe, okay, not red. How about purple? Purple's good. 
So it's a, I've decided that I'm not going to Sisters Oregon this year. There's just too much going on with, with the purchase of the of the cabin. We close on July 3rd. I want to spend some time there with my family, not run across the country. So I will miss my friends this year, but we'll see how it goes for next year. I'll just have to have them come stay with me for a change. Yeah, I got my eye on you, you burgundy piece. No, well, maybe we want the blue one. See what I mean? It's too easy to just be picky. You start picking up one thing and then you think, oh no, the next one will look better. Just pick it up and sew it on. In this whole mishmash, there is no such thing as perfect. And there is no such thing as wrong either. So these are going to be extra fun once they're trimmed up. You can see how much excess there is on the back of this one. This will look so much different. But I love that we got Quilt Diva in there. Isn't that going to be a fun one? And the Lazy Sunday. We got the Lazy Sunday block quarter in there. We'll start one more. Got some really, really fun fabrics that I know I never bought. These must have come from somebody else. And when they're ready to just scoop these off of the cutting table and stick them in the trash, it's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You can send that piece my way. Here's a fatigue. We'll just sew you right on there, too. I'm only hitting my trash can about half the time. You should see my floor. No, you better not see my floor. Okay, so I have sewn two triangles on top of this triangle. Do you see how it made it look kind of like a wonky flying goose? Now I'm going to sew something else on the top of there. Maybe this other turquoise. Nope, I want that to go down here on the bottom. want to refer to this um, video feed later, it is archived on YouTube, or will be. It takes about up to an hour after we complete the broadcast for it to be archived. And you can find it by going to my Quiltville channel on YouTube if you do a search for my name, Bonnie K. Hunter. Or if you are a friend of mine on Pinterest, if you follow me on Pinterest, I have added a board for quilt cam news feeds. So you'll be able to pin those directly to your own boards and save the episodes that you want for referring to later. You can always come back to the blog and find the previous news feeds by going back in the archives looking for things that say quilt cam as well. So happy with how this has turned out with um, the Google Hangouts. I just hope that we don't end up using all of the space that they've allotted us. We'll deal with that when it comes, because I'm sure enjoying it. You know, it really keeps me motivated. If I weren't here doing this with you, I wouldn't still be sewing tonight. It's almost 1030 at night here. But because of Quill Cam, I was able to squeeze about an extra hour and a half out of my day. And it just makes me feel like I got so much done.
my legs have a nice warm buzz from working this treadle. Blood flow's good. Fun combos. Just working my way up the strip. Okay. Here's from Kim who says she made it home after her flat tire. She says, love suggestions for small pieces. Thanks. Now I will know what to do with the small scraps from the shirt scraps from deboning shirts. Exactly. Exactly. I've got a lot of shirt scraps mixed in here along with the other stuff too. This red gingham was, I think, part of a collar or a, or a something. It's not straight cut on the ends, but I know that was a, shirt, a red gingham shirt that I cut up. Judy says, I bought the first two issues to get your mystery blocks and would love to win this issue so I can make this quilt someday. And she says, love quilt bill. Thank you so much, Judy. We've got you entered into that um, drawing. Shirley has a crumbs question. It says, most of my fabric is washed, but the pre-cuts are not washed. I think I answer this with every, every quilt cam. The th she says, is it okay to mix those washed and unwashed crumbs? This is the end of the fabric. This will make nothing but a utility quilt. Crumb quilts and string quilts are utility quilts by nature. They were never meant to be perfect, never meant to be entered into Paducah or whatever. Um, if you are worried, the thing I am most worried about is bleeding. Because I don't press with steam, I'm not worried about things shrinking while I'm working with them. But I do worry about bleeding. So if there's something that's extra suspect, I will wipe it with a wet washcloth. Say it's a saturated batik or something like that. Um, get get a wa washcloth wet. Rub it on there. If the if the color comes off on the washcloth, then do a sink rinse. You know, see if you can wash some of those things in your sink, or put them in a laundry bag and and wash them in your washer with um, some color catchers or something. So it's the color bleeding that I am most worried about. That said, I, I still live dangerously from time to time because this is the tail end of the scraps. This is just a just utility quilting here at its best. We're just covering to fill. And I'm mostly w worried about dye bleeding, not worried about mixing washed and unwashed together because once my quilts are, are quilted and, and washed, I kind of like that, that crinkled heirloom vintage look. There is no way to wash everything. Sometimes I swear people ask me a question just so that they can catch me in something that, that <laughs> they know is wrong. Yeah, she said that way. No, she's wrong. I just tell you what I do for me, and I don't, I don't worry about it. I'm looking for a color that would look really good right there. Maybe this brown. I needed some bigger, wider pieces to cover that end. But I guess the, the main thing is, if it bothers you to mix those fabrics, then listen to your heart and don't do it. Because the last thing I want is somebody saying, I did what you said. I was not happy with the results. You ruined my quilt. You know, so I don't want to tell anybody to do anything that they really, really don't want to do. Do I have a couple more triangles I can sew on here? Yes, I do. We're going to have these triangles all gone. Here's how this one's coming along so far. Looking good with those triangles in there. I keep putting things right in front of my face so then nobody can see what I'm saying. I'm not real camera savvy. We just do what we do.
think one more piece and this one will be done. Maybe something there's a whole bunch of stuff here. How about navy? Yeah. It is fun. These little scrap strips kind of keep record of all of the fabrics that have passed through your sewing room into the quilts that you've made for other people. Boy, I really got that thread stuck there. I'm trying to get rid of some seam allowance where those triangles crossed because that's a bulky spot. I think one more piece on this one will do it. What do you think? Looking pretty good? Let's stick some wild green up here. Fold it back, trim the excess, and give it a good press. These will look so different once I've completely trimmed them up. Do you see how ragged that is on the edges? It will be completely a new life once we've trimmed that up. Okay, we're going to leave that other one underneath the machine. We are just about done, done with time here. This one is from Scotty Lover who says, Love the magazine. Please enter me into your drawing. So you betcha we will do that. And Anne said, have learned so much from your blogs, have begun cutting up scraps and sorting them, have even trained myself to keep leaders and enders on hand to sew. Thanks for giving us practical ways to be creative. What a good note to end on. Oh my goodness, and here's an even better one. This is Mary in Boston who says, Hi Bonnie, you went past 4,000 followers on your blog while I was watching. Congratulations, that's awesome. So to all the newbies out there, I hope you'll hang around. I hope you'll come back. I uh, update the blog at least once a day with something quilty or fabric related or antique related or vintage machine related or sometimes it's just look at my ice cream cone I'm so happy um, I hope that you'll stick around and feel the sense of community that we have here um, in Quiltville the next quilt cam that we can do it depends on what goes on here this weekend I am leaving Tuesday for Ireland Monday is not going to be a good day for quilt cam, so maybe I can do a Sunday afternoon session and catch those in the European sector who are usually not able to catch us live. They can catch the archived versions, but I know they like to catch us live too. So perhaps, maybe, and I will send an update saying maybe, this Sunday, um, 2 p.m. Eastern, and we'll see if we can do it then. So everybody, if it's early where you are, don't stop now. See if you can squeeze out another hour, another 20 minutes, another 40 minutes, whatever it is. Plan something and leave something so that you can feel um, inspired to come back and, and sit at it some more tomorrow. And that's right where I'm going to leave this one. I'm going to turn my iron off and my light off. And this is different than it was on Ustream. I actually get to click the end broadcast button right up here. So we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.